today on Dustin to Win. Blessing is meant to be flipped. And so God puts it on our life because he trusts our life. And then what God says is, are you going to flip the blessing that I've given you? Genesis chapter 12, verse number 2. And I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. And I will make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. The question is not are you blessed. The question is are you being a blessing. You're destined to win. We gotta turn it around. Hi, welcome to Destined to Win. I'm Frank Santora, lead pastor of Faith Church, coming to you from our broadcast location in Connecticut. You'll want to stick around because today we're going to discuss something that we all need in our lives, something that will enable you to prosper in every area of your life, in your marriage, in your relationship with your kids, in your relationship with your boss, in your relationship with your money, and even in your relationship with your enemies. I hope you keep watching because today I'm excited to share with you on the blessing of the Lord. Well, let me catch you back up to speed just because it's been a week and you might have forgotten. By the way, that's why we have notes. You can get them online every single week so you can follow along with the sermon or you can follow along with them online right on your phone, on your mobile app as we're going through it so that you can remember the things that we've talked about and review them and get them locked in your heart. But last time we left off talking about ways in which you and I can walk in the blessing of God. And if you don't remember what the blessing of God is, it's his divine empowerment on your life so that you can prosper in every area of your life, right? Not just some areas, but every single area. God wants you blessed in every area of your life, relationally, physically, spiritually, financially, in your health, all those kind of things. God wants you blessed. And we said that there were a couple of keys to walking in the blessings of God. The first one, quick review, is you must believe it. You must believe that God wants to pour out his blessing on your life. Remember I quoted A.W. Tozer, and he said this, what comes into our minds when we think about God is the most important thing about us. So how do you see God? How do you see God? Do you see him as a miser? Do you see him as, a, as somebody who's wanting to get you? Or do you see him as somebody who wants to bless your life? And if you don't think God wants to bless you, remember Jacob. We talked about him. Jacob did everything wrong in his life, but still God put a life-changing blessing on him that turned him from Jacob into Israel, and you might remember that. So how do you see God? If you don't believe it, you can't receive it. Then number two, we said you need to speak it. You must declare God's blessing over your life. And we saw this again in the story of Jacob, how God changed his name from Jacob, which means supplanter and struggler, to Israel, which means prince with God, so that every time his name was called, the declaration of God's blessing was pronounced on his life. And when that declaration of God's blessing was pronounced on his life, it had the power to reverse the curse of him struggling all his life. And so we need to speak the blessing. Just like if you don't believe it, you can't receive it. If you don't say it, you won't see it. I'm rhyming a lot, but I'm rhyming for a purpose so that you can remember these things. These are important spiritual principles. The Bible and the blessings of God does not come on your life by accident. It comes on your life by intention. Then number three, you must obey it. You must walk in obedience to God's word in order to position yourself under the umbrella of God's blessing. And you might remember in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse number two, it says, all these blessings shall come on you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Obedience is the key to seeing the blessing of God on your life. God doesn't bless disobedience, but he sure does bless obedience. Obedience keeps us under the umbrella of God's blessing that is ours by virtue of what Jesus accomplished through his life, death, and resurrection. We need to stay under the umbrella of God's blessing. Speaking of the umbrella, by the way, um, the first man who ever carried an umbrella, his name was Jonas Hanway. 
and he was memorialized in London's iconic Westminster Abbey for the help that he gave to the helpless, to the abandoned, to the friendless, to the prostitutes, to, to youth who had nowhere to go. He was memorialized in the Westminster Abbey as a friend and, and father of the poor. Later on in life, he became the VP of the Foundling Hospital, and that was a hospital that was a home to the homeless where families that were in dire straits or children that were abandoned could go and find refuge. He was the first man in London to carry an umbrella. Before that, before he carried the umbrella, the umbrella was thought to be an accessory just for ladies. Back in the day, real men got wet. That's basically what they thought. And so he broke the trend in that area. He was a pioneer of the umbrella being for everyone. And, and so is the blessing of the Lord. It is a, a umbrella, if you will, that is for everyone. It knows no sex. It knows no gender. It knows no skin color. It is available for everyone. And that's everyone that walks in obedience to the word of God. The good news, though, is that we talked about this. If you walk out from underneath the umbrella and you're getting wet by the storms of life, you can always walk back underneath the umbrella and you can find refuge and safety. The blessing of God is not a get out of jail free card, but it is a promise that where life puts a period, God just puts a comma. In other words, there's, there's more to come, that God will turn every situation into your life into a blessing if you will be obedient to his word. And then number four, we said you must fight for it. You and I must value God's blessings over everything else in our lives. The reason why some people don't get blessed or experience the blessing of God is because they're like Esau. Esau was Jacob's brother in the Bible, right? He traded his birthright, birthright blessing for a bowl of stew. And we talked about the fact that if Satan's stew, and Satan's got a different stew that he fixes up for all of us, right? It really repeats it in almost everybody, but everybody is susceptible to some type of stew. And, and the question is, do we value the sat satanic stew more than we value the supernatural blessing of God? For you remember, in, in the Bible, there were so many people who substituted or traded out the blessing of God for some ch uh, cheap substitute. For Esau, it was a bowl of stew. For Samson, it was a one-night stand. For Judas, it was 30 pieces of silver. Such an inferior things, or uh, such inferior things to trade out the blessing of God. What, what is your stew? What is the thing that you, that, that you want now? The, the temptation that you fall into now, that you are trading out for the supernatural blessing of God on your life. Can I just tell you, they don't even compare. God's is better in every single way. And the reason why the blessing stayed on Jacob and not on Esau was because Jacob got to the point in his life where he said, I'm not letting you go until you bless me. I'm going to fight for the blessing of God. Whereas Esau said, I'll, I'll just give it up for a bowl of stew. And then the last one and the one I want to talk to you about today, and this is where I believe the power is. This is where blessing turns into double blessing. It's when you, it's when you flip it. When you, when you pass on your blessing, when you let God use you to be a blessing, it becomes a fo force multiplier in your life. You know what force multipliers are, right? Force multipliers, they talk about this in sports a lot, right? That you, you can add certain people to a team, and the team gets better in that position. But then you add other people to the team, and everybody on the team gets better. They're, they're, they're a force multiplier, right? Well, flipping it is a force multiplier when it comes to the blessing of God in your life. Nowadays, people get rich by flipping houses, right? And that's cool and all that kind of stuff. But I pray that God helps me to put into words how blessed you become when you flip what God has done in your life and you let that touch other people's lives. Flipping your blessing turns God's single blessing into a double blessing in your life. Life has a way of producing giant obstacles. These barriers tend to block growth and abundance from your family, your finances, your success, and even your destiny. 
And if these obstacles continue to grow, they will cause other issues, compromising your financial stability, your relationships, and even your health. It's time for you to defeat your giants and turn them into opportunities. Pastor Frank Santora wants to help you conquer your battles so you can see the true meaning and blessing behind them. In his brand new ebook, Your Giant is Going Down, you'll gain the knowledge and insight you need to defeat the unwanted stress, fear, and doubt in your life that is blocking your blessings. God will deliver you from every battle that you face. The key to claiming victory over these obstacles is having a strong connection with God and yourself. It's your time to eliminate these giants and have peace and happiness. Request your free copy of the Your Giant is Going Down ebook and receive a downloadable PDF to your email. Six times in the Bible, God promises double. Let's look at them. Number one in Isaiah 61, verse number seven, double prosperity for shame and dishonor is promised. Isaiah 61, verse seven says, instead of shame and dishonor, you will enjoy a double share of honor. You will possess a double portion of prosperity in your land, and everlasting joy will be yours. Second place, in 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 17, double honor is promised to faithful spiritual leaders. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse number 17, let the elders who rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in the word and in doctrine. That's one of my favorite verses in the Bible right there. That was a joke because it applies to me, right? Uh, number three, it, in Zechariah chapter 9, verse number 12, it's promised double blessing to prisoners of war. Watch this. Zechariah 9, 12 says, return to the stronghold, you prisoners of hope. Even today I declare that I will restore double to you. This promise of double is interesting because God gives it to Israel after they were prisoners of war, captive by the Babylonians. And God, instead of calling them prisoner of, prisoners of war, he says, I want you to see yourself as prisoners of hope. Comes back to what A.W. Tozer said. He said, what comes into our minds when we think about God is the most important thing about us. So when you are captive, how do you see God? Do you see him as somebody who sets the captives free? When, when you're in pain, how do you see God? Do you see him as a God who bottles your tears and takes notice of everything that you're going through? When you're being tested and feel trapped, how do you see God? Do you see him as the God who always causes you to triumph? When you're experiencing trouble, do you see God as the God who recompenses double for your trouble? How do you see God? God said, look, I know you're a prisoner of war right now, but I want you to see yourself as a prisoner of hope. And when you see yourself as a prisoner of hope, expecting good Good things to come. Guess what happens? Double comes your way. I love it in the message. Here's what it says. And you, because of my blood covenant with you, Zechariah 9, 12, because of my blood covenant with you, I'll release your prisoners from their hopeless cells. Come home, hope-filled prisoners. This very day, I'm declaring double bonus, everything you lost returned twice over. I don't know about you, but I love that. That gets me excited. Anybody ever lost anything? Anything ever get taken away from somebody? And it hasn't been taken away from you because of your sin and stupidity, but it got taken away from you because the devil came in and he came to steal, kill, and destroy. Every time that happens in your life, guess what? Get ready for double. Why? It's a promise in the word of God. Double for your trouble. Twice over returned. The greatest double blessing in all the world that we've ever received, if you're a believer, is a double blessing we received in Christ. Number one, our sin forgiven and forgotten through the death of Christ. Number two, his life being credited to our account. It's a double blessing. They say, what do you mean, Pastor? Well, the reason why God doesn't punish us for our sin, anybody happy about that? The reason why God doesn't punish us for our sin, and there's a difference between punishment and consequences, by the way. Consequences are the things that we cause in our own life. Hello? Anybody with me? But anyway, uh, the reason why God doesn't punish us with eternal damnation for our sin, which is the wages of sin. The wages of sin is death. Sin doesn't get a wink from God. Sin doesn't get a pass from God. Sin doesn't get a, uh, all right, everybody's human from God. Sin gets death from God. That's, what, that's the consequences of sin. It is eternal separation from God. 
And the reason why God doesn't punish us in that way is because he punished himself for us. On the cross, Jesus took the punishment that you and I deserved so that God would not have to punish us with the eternal consequences of our sin. And so because of the death of Christ, our sin is forgiven and forgotten. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. But if all God wanted to do was withhold punishment from us, Jesus could have showed up one day, died the next day, resurrected the following day, we'd be good. Because we'd be able to, God would be able to say, okay, I'm not going to punish you. But before he died on the cross, he lived a sinless, spotless life for 33 and one half years. A life, listen to me carefully, deserving of every good thing that God, our Heavenly Father, has for us. And by the way, that's all he has for you. You realize that. Every good thing and every, perfect, every good gift and every perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights in whom there's no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Jesus, who was the express image of the Father, God manifest in the flesh, Acts 10, 38. He went about doing good and healing all those who are oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. The Bible says in Psalms over and over again, God, you are good. Matter of fact, Jesus... When the rich young ruler came to him and he said, he said, good master, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He looked at the man and he said, why do you call me good? It wasn't because he wasn't good. He was alerting the man to the fact that by virtue of calling him good, he was recognizing that he is God because God only does good. And so Jesus, when he lived his life, 33 and a half years, he merited everything. Every good gift that God the Father has that you and I do not deserve. But here's the beauty. Here's the double bonus of being in Christ. Not only do you get uh, relieved from punishment for your sin because of the death of Christ, but the life of Christ is credited to your account so that his righteousness becomes yours. And by virtue of what Jesus did with his life, God is able to give you every good blessing that he has because he's not looking at you. He's looking at the life of Jesus credited to you, and that's what grace is. It's God's riches at Christ's expense. Oh, that was so good. Y'all ain't ready for me this morning. Double blessing. Double blessing. In Job chapter 42, verse number 10, we are promised double blessing in our latter days. You ever, you ever get around people as they start getting older? They start thinking like, all right, you know, everything that I was going to experience and everything is kind of done. And they, they kind of throw in the towel and they kind of coast. Don't coast. Why? So much more. Do you know your ladder can be better than your beginning? Do you know your ladder can be better than your current? Do you know your ladder can be better than your former? Do you know that? I mean, when I started thinking about this thing, God's been good to me up until this point. I'm 51. I know I don't look for it. I'm 51. And God's been good to me. But I just, can't, I just can't get my mind around the fact that God says my latter will be greater than my former. I can't wait to see how good God is going to be to me in my latter years. Job 42. And the Lord restored Job's losses when he prayed for his friends. Indeed, the Lord gave him twice as much as he had before. Verse 12, now the Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning, for he had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camel, uh, uh, 1,000 yoke of oxen, and 1,000 female donkeys. He blessed the latter. And what was interesting is it was so in line with the law, the Old Testament law. The Old Testament law, and that's the fifth time double blessing is pronounced in the Bible. In Exodus 22, verse number 2, it says, If a thief is caught with an animal that he stole and found alive, whether it be an ox or an ass or a sheep, he shall restore double. And so because the enemy came into Job's life and, and stole all of his property, some of which was, were animals, God gave him back double. I got to thinking about this. 
If the Old Testament law said if a thief is caught, he's got to pay double, what about the New Testament thief? What about the enemy who comes to steal, kill, and destroy? What happens when he gets caught stealing something from God's kids? Well, if God gave them double in the Old Testament, I don't know about you, but I'm expecting even greater than double for everything that the enemy has stolen. If the enemy has stolen anything for you, brace yourself and start getting ready for everything in your life to double. But you got to believe it. And if you don't believe it, you can't receive it. And then the last time in the Bible double is mentioned is in 2 Kings chapter 2, verse number 10. It's our opening text. This is a double anointing promise to flippers. If you're a flipper, the promise is a double anointing. What if you're not a flipper? No double anointing. Watch this. 2 Kings chapter 2, Verse number nine says, and so it was when they had crossed over that Elisha said to Elijah, ask what I may do for you before I am taken away from you. And Elijah said, please let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. And so he said, you have asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if you see me when I'm taking from you, it shall be for you. But if not, it shall not be for you. Then he took the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him. He struck the water. He said, where is the God of Elijah? And when he had struck the water, it divided this way and that. Elijah crossed over. And when the sons of the prophets who were with him from Jericho saw it, they said, the spirit of Elijah rests on Elijah. The double fell on Elijah. Here is why most people do not experience double in their life. But you can because in order to experience double in your life, you've got to separate yourself from the things of the world. We can't be half in, half out. We can't be lukewarm. We can't be playing with the world and then, and then playing church. We've got to have a full commitment to God, fully separated to the things of God. And then God's house and, God and, and the things that God's value need to be first in our lives. This is not my church. This is not your church. Even though it is our church, guess whose church is? It's God's church, right? It's God's kingdom. Jesus said, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. It's his. And so how we treat the house of God is a measuring stick for how we treat God himself. And God said, if you will separate yourself from the world, if you will put the house of God and the things of God first, you will see the miracle of double in your life. I love talking about the blessing of the Lord. When you choose to become his child, he puts his name on you. God's name is on you, so start walking in that name. Start living underneath the banner and blessing of that name. Open up your Bible and read about what insurmountable, never been done, seas you can swim, mountains you can climb, and valleys you can walk through in that name. Find out what is yours and don't let anything stop you from living underneath the blessing of God. I've put together some resources to help you walk in the blessing of the Lord. Here's how you can get them. Since Jesus came to give us abundant life, the kind of life that produces joy, fulfillment, assurance, and victory, why do so many believers feel out of control, unfulfilled, and simply unhappy? In his four-part audio series, Get Your Life Back, Pastor Frank provides practical steps to restore your joy and purpose in life. For your gift of $40 or more to the ministry, you will receive not only the Get Your Life Back series, but also the Blessed to Be a Blessing four-part series as well. In them, Pastor Frank will not only show you how to get your life back in order, but also how to responsibly walk in the blessing that follows. He even reveals the eye-opening principles he wishes someone had shared with him about being blessed. To get your 8-CD, two-series bundle of Get Your Life Back and Blessed to Be a Blessing for a gift of $40, just visit franksentor.cc to order online. Get started on your journey to getting your life back and using it to bless others today. The power of living underneath the blessing of the Lord isn't just for us to enjoy for ourselves. The greatest thing you and I can do is turn it into a double blessing and flip that blessing onto others. 
In today's crazy world, it is becoming more and more necessary for people to hear the uncompromising truth of the gospel and the principles of the Word of God even when they aren't popular or are countercultural. There's a fire burning in me to preach the truth now more than ever and see people's lives set free, discipled, and come to know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. But we can't do it alone. So we are asking you to partner with us financially on a monthly basis. No matter what you feel led by the Lord to do, whether large or small, together we can reach this generation with the truth of the gospel. You can become a partner by visiting our website, franksantora.cc and choosing partnership. Through the power of partnership, we can do so much more together for the Lord. Thank you so much and may God bless you abundantly for your generosity. And as always, remember these words, with Jesus you are destined to win. Spirit of God, have your way. Sweep across this room and move in miraculous ways. Manifest your glory, Spirit of God, have your way. Sweep across this room and move in miraculous ways. Manifest your glory. If you're in the New York City or Connecticut area, we invite you to visit us at one of our locations or join us online every Sunday at faithchurch.cc live. On behalf of Pastor Frank and from all of us at Faith Church, God bless you, we love you, and we'll see you next week.